Good morning, good morning. Good morning, is it coming through? We're testing things out ahead of time. All right. Just settle back, get something good to drink. Uh, if you're online, you're checking it out already, uh, we'll be with you in just a second. So hang in there.
Welcome to Hope Vineyard Church. My name is Dee Dee Wood, and I'm one of your pastors here, along with Jim Wood, my husband. And we are very happy to be celebrating Jesus with you this morning. And today is our 11-year anniversary of having the church up here in Paxton. So for those of you who have been with us for 11 years, thank you. And for those of you who have joined us more recently than that, we thank you as well. We also want to thank you for um, continuing to uh, participate in worship by giving. I know some of you um, are able to give online. We, uh, some of you send in um, checks, and some of you are here and you pay um, and you tithe and give um, through the little offering box that we have over there in the corner. And that just, we just want to thank you. We know that it's not easy always to do, and yet it really does help support the ministry here in Paxton. And we really, um, and out there as well, and we are very um, appreciative of that. Um, if you have already, um, we'd like to remind you to like us on Facebook and Instagram, and you can check out our YouTube page or the, check out the website. If you haven't already, go ahead and say hi in the comments if you're online or if you're here and you're also online. Um, tell everybody hi this morning and, and uh, maybe share a little bit about your week. And before we get um, go any further, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you for the 11 years that you have moved in this community and in the communities in which we impact through the ministry that you're doing here with Hope in Your Church. Lord, we thank you that you are good, that you continue to meet us, and that you continue to move in our lives. And we thank you for the stories, the stories of the ways that you have imp impacted individuals and communities and um relationships and and have healed and and have met people where they're at lord we thank you for um the opportunity to join you in this work and we ask that as jim shares the message this morning that you will um just anoint his words and you also open up our hearts to hear um the words that you want to say to us through the holy spirit in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now Jim is going to share our message. All right. Good morning. Glad to see you all here. Yes. As Didi shared, today does mark our 11th anniversary uh, since we held our first service in Paxton. It was a Sunday on September 26, 2010. And uh, it's been it's been quite a journey for us over these last 11 years. Uh, I just want to share some stats for you. Over these 11 years, we've had 575 Sundays. So that's quite a lot. But in that time, there's been over 1,027 worship services on Sunday morning during that time. So that's a whole lot of worship. Uh, we've had over 100 baptisms. We've given away over 6,000 bottles of water just as a way to show God's love in a practical way. We've painted over 450 faces uh, at the park over this time. We've given away over 2,000 cups of hot chocolate at the Christmas tree lighting. Uh, it, we've been a place for kids with untold number of babies through fifth grade coming and worshiping Jesus in ways that connect on their level. Um, we've been a refuge for the youth in Paxton with scores of 6th through 12th grade PBL students being exposed to Jesus and in, in finding out how to worship and experience his welcome and acceptance here. We've done our part to lead worship services at the nursing homes here. Uh, we've partnered with several other churches in Paxton for a decade ago to uh, establish the Hands of Christ Food Pantry, which still serves our community and has been a uh, a wonderful addition and source of help for many people during this pandemic. We've shown God's love in practical ways through community kindness outreaches. We've done weddings. We've done a whole lot of funerals, too many. Um, and a personal highlight for me is uh, really the Christmas time. Christmas time is my favorite time of the year normally. Christmas time is my favorite time in the church world, uh, um, being able to take part in the community tree lighting, which just happens right outside our doors here, uh, being part of the parade, 
uh, has been amazing, and, um, and I love that. And I look forward to being able to participate in that again this year. Um, there have been many amazing things over these last 11 years, and we look back with, with awe at what God has done. Um, it's also been, to be honest, a confusing and a painful time, a difficult time in a lot of ways, not just during the pandemic, but surely church life has been altered and forever changed through uh, this crazy COVID season that we're in. And um, everybody who talks about church life, the, the gurus, the people who study statistics, they say, you know, almost every church has suffered in big and small ways, lots of us in big ways. All of my friends who pastor, when I talk to them, they say, this is not a time where we're thriving. It's not a time where it's easy. It's challenging. We've lost people because of COVID. We've lost people because they just slip away. And um, even though they've been participants and, and key parts of the church, they just stop coming, stop communicating altogether. And that's really painful. It's really hard. And knowing what to do as we go forward is also really challenging, too. And so it's our 11th anniversary we're celebrating what God's done. We're celebrating that he's been faithful. Uh, it also happens to be my birthday today. Yeah, happy birthday to me. Yes, number 51 for me. We planted this church on my 40th birthday, Sunday morning. That was not by design. It's just how it all happened. We were um, we picked a date. That seemed to be the best date for us to do that, and so we, we did that. Um, and so it makes it easy to remember when our church anniversary is, is on my birthday. And that's a good thing because increasingly I find myself forgetting things. Like, I don't know, some of you who are also veterans of living, um, that's a nice way of saying you're old like me. Um, maybe you can relate to that too, right? Forgetting things. So, like, I'll be doing something. I'll be working on something. You know, take, for instance, I'm, I'm up here a lot of times um, setting the stage up, and I'm like, I need to go get that thing, and there's a room right over here. I'll go into that room, like it's 20 feet away. I'll get in that room, and I'll totally forget why I'm in there. Like, what did I come in here for again? What's that thing? Anybody else relate to that forgetfulness? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So the fact that, you know, the anniversary falls on my birthday, it, it helps some of that forgetfulness. I'll, you know, when you go into another room or you forget, why, why am I here in the first place? What is this all about? And then I'm like, try to be a detective. I think of the clues. Well, what was I doing? Um, what do I have in my hand? Oh, it must relate to why I'm in here. You know, like literally, that's my life now most of the time. But, um, you know, when we, when we get forgetful like that, we forget what we're doing, it, it's disconcerting. And the same thing can happen to us as a church. We can be forgetful about why we're here, what we're about. Um, we get on in years. You, get, you might turn 11. Uh, you're busy. The church can be busy. Every good church, busy, active, things are going on, but you fall into a routine. You know, there's things that you, it's just like every Sunday and you got to do these things and there's familiarity. And over time, you might forget as a church why we're in the room. Why do we plant? Why are we here in the first place? Well, today's Bible reading comes from Psalm 19. And if you want to turn there, you certainly can do that right now. Psalm 19, it's probably right smack dab in the middle of your Bible. If you have a paper Bible, uh, you can enter it in the, in the uh, search on your electronic Bibles, like the one I use. Um, but Psalm 19 is, a, is our daily reading. One of the things that we have, have done and changed over the years is move towards trying, for the most part, um, on Sundays using what is called the lectionary, which is what churches of many denominations use to, to, um, to pull from for Sunday sermons. So we're not just like picking things out of random, out of the air, and just trying to um, share and teach and preach on that. We're, um, in this way, we're partnering and having unity with churches throughout the world in reading some of the same scriptures on Sunday morning. And so Psalm 19 is today's uh, psalm reading, and I felt it was a really good one for us to use because it's a reminder for us uh, why we planted this church in the first place. And I'll show you why as we go through it. So if you want to follow along, you can read that, but not just like why we planted 
11 years ago, but also gives us some direction for, you know, what can we be doing right now as a church? If the last year and a half has taught us anything, it's that nobody can guarantee the future. Like, none of us can guarantee the future. We can't even predict it. I mean, uh, will we even be here in another 11 years? Or 11 months, for that matter. Uh, 11 days? I hope so. I think we'll be here in 11 days. The most I can guarantee, unless something catastrophic happens, is I have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in the next 11 minutes. Okay? So we'll know we have a pretty good idea. But other than that, I don't plan too far ahead. And that's, that's I, I think, that's a place where I've had to grow in um, trusting God in that, but it's also a good place to be. So let's read Psalm 19. As we do, let's welcome the Holy Spirit to speak to us, speak to our hearts, and help us see the call that we have as a church, Hope Vineyard Church, and the call that we have as the people who call this place home. I'm going to read it. You can follow along or just listen as we do this. Psalm 19, verse 7 is where I'm starting says, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer now in this psalm uh, as i said i I think it gives us a picture of of why we planted and what we're to be about Um, essentially the psalmist is saying two things that god's ways are better than anything the lord's ways are better than anything else and number two the psalmist is showing us that our ways are supposed to align with his ways And that was his prayer at the end. So let's unpack this just a little bit. What does it mean when we say God's ways are better than anything else? Well, the psalmist starts the psalm by extolling the virtues of the Lord, the ways of the Lord. He says, God's instructions, they're perfect. Everything about them is perfect. And because they're perfect, they revive us. They revive our souls. They give us life. They give us health. They give us wellness. His instructions are perfect. He says his decrees... The Lord's decrees are trustworthy. We can trust God in everything. We can trust him that he's telling us what's good for us. We can trust him that uh, that with our lives, we can trust him with everything about us. And when we trust him, when we follow his decrees, he says that it brings wisdom even to the most simple of us. He says the Lord's commandments, they're just right. The Lord's commandments are right and We don't often think about following commandments as bringing joy, but that's what the psalmist says. The Lord's commandments bring joy. Not only that, but his commands are clear. So the Lord is pretty, pretty clear about what he expects. And and in doing that, we have insight for how to live. Overall, he says, overall, the Lord's laws are true and they're fair. But he goes on to describe the Lord's ways. You know, these are the Lord's ways, his commands, his decrees, his his instructions. He says all of his ways are desirable. These are the ways that we should pursue. These are the ways that we should crave. They're desirable. They're sweeter than honey. They're a warning. And uh, as a warning, we kind of think, ooh, scary. But no, we think of the Lord's ways as being a warning for us in the way that a mother might warn a child against something that would harm them. And so when we follow his commands, when we live by his decrees, when we go by his expectations and follow his ways, we are avoiding pitfalls. Or when we do fall into pits, we're able to get out with his help. And then lastly, he says, the Lord's ways are a reward. They're a reward. They're they're a benefit for all of us who obey him. So basically, the psalmist who's writing Psalm 19, says that God's ways are better than anything else, higher than anything else, 
and following his commands and walking in his ways leads to shalom, the good life. And that's what shalom means in Hebrew. It means the good life. It means everything in its place. It means um, how we should be living. And when we follow, when we follow God's ways, it pleases the Lord. But what are his ways? What commands is the psalmist talking about? This can be confusing because if you've ever tried to read all of the Bible, especially the Old Testament, there's a whole lot of commands, aren't there? A lot of instructions, a lot of laws, lots of decrees, lots of this and that, and it can be really challenging. Do we need to know them all? Are we supposed to keep all of them? Uh, you know, note for note, this is really what the Jews tried to do. Uh, and they found that the law following these decrees was really difficult because uh, there's so much to it. But thankfully, Jesus arrives and Jesus makes it really clear for us. He makes it super simple. In Mark, uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 12, verse 30, he says, you know what? When he's asked, what, what is, what, which of these commands, you know, the the people around him are asking, which of these commands, which of the decrees, which of the ways, which of the, those are the most important? Which are the ones that we should follow? And he says to them, here it is, real easy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. He says the second command is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And so he puts these together together. Uh, they seem like two commands, but Jesus connects them and says, here's what you're supposed to do. It's real simple. Love the Lord and love other people. Love God, love people. That's what you're supposed to do. And in the parallel gospel in Matthew 22, that section where, it's, where Matthew um, documents this same interplay, he, said, uh, he, he clarifies it too, He's, where Jesus says the entire law. The entire law and all the demands, and we would say the commandments, the instructions, the decrees that we just talked about in the Psalms, all of the law and all the demands are based on these two commandments. So when we deep dive in the Old Testament, when we're reading through all those uh, laws and the things that, um, that we feel like this is overwhelming, even the Ten Commandments, all of it comes together into that very simple decree. His ways are that we are to love God and love other people. Very, very simple, very direct. And uh, that's what the ways of the Lord really boils down to. It's what we want to be about. And so if we take that first part of the psalm, we can simplify it in this way. We can say loving God and loving others revives our souls, and it brings joy, and it makes us wise, and it helps us to live. That's really what we're to be about, and it's, it's largely the big picture, why we planted this church 11 years ago. Because we want to be a place that celebrates that God's ways are better than anything else. We want to be a church that reminds ourselves, encourages ourselves, encourages our neighbors, uh, and declares it that uh, God's ways are better than anything else. His ways are so good. They're be- it's sweeter than honey. Sweeter than chocolate cake with white icing, which I'm hoping to have later today. It's my favorite. I love the frosting. I think cake is just a delivery device for frosting. Anybody else? Amen? Can I, I'm preaching now, so this is real. No? All right. I just eat the tub of frosting. It's so good. Um, oh, somebody say yuck. I rebuke that. <laughs> like, no. It's sweeter than that. It's sweeter than the sweetest frosting. It's sweeter and better. God's ways are so good, and it's part of why we planted 11 years ago, to proclaim it and to share it and reveal it with how we live, to be people who seek to follow his ways and, and, and do that, to love God and love others. And then the psalmist uh, says, you know, these are God's ways, but we have our ways too, and our ways need to align with his ways that we are to live in a way that aligns with the ways of God. We can't be trying to do it on our own. And in fact, w- we, we can't try to live according to God's ways on our own either. We need the power and we need the presence of God 
And that's why this prayer that uh, the psalmist prays in verse 14 is so powerful and vital. I'll read it again, verse 14. And you've probably heard it. It's one of those that makes it onto um, you know, shareable memes on social media or people you know, needlepoint this. Um, and they say, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's a prayer, a prayer for God to move, for his power to make my ways align with his ways. We pray uh, and uh, just break this down. You know, he says, may the words of my mouth. That's the external. That's the things we do. That's our actions. Um, may those words, not just words, but everything I do, all the actions that I have, let them be pleasing to you. Let them align with how you want me to behave. So we have that external part of us, but we also have an internal part. And that's why he prays the meditation of my heart. Those are the, the things that form us, the things we dwell on, the things that we're always um, thinking about. It's our thoughts and our desires and our dreams and our goals and aspirations the things that we meditate on, let them, let them uh, be, form us in a way that is pleasing to God. And so we have our external part and we have our internal part. And we submit both these things. And that, if you haven't figured it out yet, that's our entire self, our entire being. We want to submit all of that to the Lord as a way to please Him. Let these things, all of it, be pleasing to you. Let my external life and my internal life align with your ways, Lord. Let my external and internal life bring you joy. Let it be pleasing to you. And the psalmist here, he speaks of Jesus. We see Jesus showing up in the psalm long before Jesus showed up on the earth in flesh. He says, my rock and my redeemer. Now we know that that's who Jesus is. He is our rock. He's our foundation. He's the solid ground. He's the the name above all names, the one who came to deliver and save. And that's why he's our redeemer, too. He's the rescuer, the one who takes us out of the miry pit and and establishes our feet on solid ground, on solid rock. And so we pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, let my words and let my heart, let it be pleasing to you. Form me. We're inviting God to form us and to have our ways align with his ways. And that is not just a personal prayer. It's not just for me, but it's a collective prayer. It's a community prayer. Uh, We do this in community and encourage one another and remind one another and help one another. And that's why it's so important for the churches, not just our church, but all churches, to be able to meet and have this kind of community where we can see one another, we know one another, we can be known in community, and we press into that. It's not always easy. It's not always delightful because sometimes when we, uh, you know, sharpen iron, you know, sharpening of irons causes sparks and it causes, um, can cause conflict, but yet, That's part of what God has done. He's put us in communities. He's put us into families where we can encourage and and participate with one another. And, you know, one of the dangers of of the um, the pandemic is that we've become so uh, independent or so individually focused. And, And the church and faith in Jesus has never been about a personal faith in Jesus. It's always been about a collective community faith that is walked out together with other people. That's, that's what Jesus came to establish. There are no lone rangers in faith. And so that's why I think no matter how much church life has changed over this last year and a half, uh, the church is always going to have a role in the community. It has to. It, I can guarantee it's probably going to be different and it's going to look different. And I don't have a clue as to exactly what that looks like. But like I said, we continue to put one foot in front of the other and and walk this out with the help of Jesus. And so we pray that prayer that he will form us and align us to his ways. 
you know, anniversaries are, are great reminders of where we've been, and that's one of the reasons that I like to look back on, you know, what, what have we done? Because it feels like, you know, 11 years has gone really fast. How many of you in here, or if you're online, give us a thumbs up. We're here on that first Sunday, that very first Sunday. Can anybody? We have a few. Yeah. And so some of you, not raising your hands, you're, you're beneficiaries of what went before you, right? Uh, John Wimber, who uh, established, helped establish the vineyard, lead it in its formative years, um, would say that we all eat from trees that none of us planted. We all eat apples from trees that were planted long before we got the fruit. And in that same way, we want to be a church that continues to plant life-giving fruit for others to um, partake in. And so we're glad. If you were here on that first Sunday 11 years ago, if you came along along the way, we're so happy that you're part of this thing. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's good to look back. It's also good for us. The anniversaries uh, allow us an opportunity to reflect on what's to come. And uh, like I said, the future is not promised. There's no guarantees. Um, you know, in business, at least up until recent times, there was always this big push, and, and, it, and it seeped into the church world. We, um, Dee Dee and I were raised on it in, um, you know, it's, it's church more as a corporate business culture than anything, which I don't think really is God's design. Uh, but nonetheless, it's this, you know, you got to develop a five-year plan. you got to have a 10-year plan. Know where you're going, blah, blah, blah. And they, you hear that a lot in the business world, I'm sure, wherever you're working. But five-year plans are bogus. Like, we got to have a plan, you know, like you set your course. But in Proverbs, like, we, we forget what the Lord has showed us for thousands of years. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And we, you know, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. We just have to be faithful in the moment and in the next step and the next step and the next step to continue to pursue him. And so, you know, you're not going to hear us say, this is what we're doing next year. We're going to be, you know, get back to having this place full and we're going to have four services and we're going to have all these programs. And like, well, that might happen or church may continue to look quite different. We just have to be faithful with where we are and continue to press in and continue to pray, um, not for a full building, but to pray for, God, let me, let my ways align with your ways. Because I think if we do that, then we have been a success. Whether there's just three of us or 3,000 of us, if we're all seeking to have our ways align with God's ways, to me, I've learned 51 years now into life that that is a success. I didn't always believe it, but I do believe that that is the way of the Lord. To be a success is to be faithful, love mercy, walk justly, follow his ways and align them with us. We're going to sing a new song today, and, um, and it talks about just how powerful Jesus' name is and, and that we stand on that solid foundation really it's a solid foundation to know that his name has power and we we just cling to him and i know less now than i did 11 years ago i was much smarter that first day as a pastor 11 years ago um, i feel like i know a whole lot less because god is so much bigger now and as we press in i i the one thing i do know is that jesus is amazing he continues to be amazing, and there's nothing like him. His ways are better than anything else. And in this new song, we'll be singing about his ways, that he breaks change, and he makes miracles, and he raises the dead, and he uh, continues to bring in those who are lost, the prodigals, the wayward ones. And we're going to be all about that. That's what we're about. It's why we planted 11 years ago. It's if, if anything, it's why we continue to be here, to proclaim that God's ways are better than anything else in this life. And we want to be people who gather so that we can be encouraged by that, be formed by that, and be shaped by what he wants us to do in our uh, locations, where we work, where we play, where we do life in this crazy world. And so I want to just say thank you for being part
thank you for being part of these 11 years. We hope you'll press in as we move forward. And uh, we're just grateful for every one of you who has um, been faithful and generous and sacrificial in so many crazy ways. Um, so thank you for being here. And let's just pray that prayer. I, wanna, I felt led to pray that prayer as the, as the band comes on up now. You can come on up. Let's just pray together. Um, I'll pray this prayer. Not that yet, Luke. You got it almost. Uh, the prayer that the psalmist prays, verse 14. And I'll just pray it over us, and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. This, uh, so, Lord, we come. We say, may the words of our mouths, as your church, let the words, our actions, everything that we do, let it be pleasing to you. Lord, let, let, let our words be your words. Let, our, um, let the things we do, let them be your things. I pray that you would help us to inform us to, to want your ways as we walk out these actions. And Lord, may the meditations of our heart also be pleasing to you. Form us on the inside. Help us to be people who um, press in to, uh, to really knowing what it is that, that you love. Let us dwell on the things that you love, all the good things that you love. Let us dwell on that um, and form our hearts to um, be a blessing to you, Lord. Let it be pleasing to you because you are our rock. You're our redeemer. You are the one, the one and only one who saves, Lord. You, Jesus, are so good to us, and we honor you today. We thank you for these 11 years, and we ask you uh, to continue to help us to see how we can um, just serve you and walk in your ways. Align us with who you are, our rock and our redeemer. And now we pray that prayer, Lord, that you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so I want to invite you to sing. We're going to, uh, we'll do that new song in a little bit. But first, let's just celebrate together uh, just how good God is and invite him to align our ways. This song is a, it's an invitation for God to form us, to reign in us and, and focus his um, complete kingdom in our lives.
Father, thank you for what you have done in these last 11 years, what you've done this morning, and what you have yet to do. Lord, we thank you that you are good, and we stand on your name, and we listen for your ways, and we listen for you to lead us, and then we step one foot in front of the other. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that we can trust you for our tomorrows. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What we've been doing at the end of service is if anybody wants to receive prayer for anything, um, you can either come up or you can raise your hand. We'll make sure that we um, get to you and pray for you. And if you are online and would want to um, receive prayer for something, then uh, either direct message us or put it in the comments and um, somebody will pray for you in the comments and we can also add you to the intercessory um, prayer letter. So uh, there are many ways to receive prayer. That, uh, we are thinking of you and we do pray th- for you all through the week. And so we um, are glad to be part of this family and we wish, uh, wish you a good week. We'll see you next time.